Welcome to On The Chain. So let's look at this right here. Sir John uh, Volkonik says, uh, please, Matt, as an ex-Ripple intern. Well, he's not an intern. He's an ex-Ripple employee. <laughs> he's taking a piss. I know, Sir. I, I know he is, but I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> but people listening don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you once, can you for once and for all explain to the people who don't know how things work that there is no parallel to the XRP ledger? Yeah, yeah. So there's this, there's this beam that's been going on for a long time about a private ledger with some mystical xrp that is valued some high value <laughs> perhaps 589 dollars or whatever it is i think it's gone up now it's like tens of thousands of people seem to be talking about that um you know some mystical xrp that is that is not for ordinary plebs like uh, you or i chip but uh mm -hmm. for for the elite lizard people whoever whatever that are that are running the world right um and there's this secret ledger in that and it's 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 complete nonsense on on several kind of levels. So one is the way in which prices work and the way in which so you've got technically hundreds of private ledgers out there because every single centralized exchange is a private ledger, right? In and of itself. It doesn't run XRP ledger software, but it is a private ledger, right? Now, whether that's Coinbase or Binance or Kraken or Gemini or whoever, I mean, half, half of those don't list XRP, but anyway, you know, whichever these centralized exchanges are, they all have built in some kind of ledger that says Matt has this much XRP, Chip has this much XRP, right? And you can buy and sell on their exchange and the price on one exchange will be slightly different to a price on another exchange or slightly different to a price on on the XRP ledger decks or whatever. <clears throat> but they're, they're, they're kind of brought about in check by the act of arbitrage. And that is the fact that if there's a high price on one exchange, somebody will sell on that exchange and then take the asset to another exchange or take the, the, the profit to another exchange and buy again back there, right? So if XRP is a dollar on one exchange and I sell $100 worth of XRP, I have my $100, I take that to another exchange where it's 50 cents, and for that I can buy 200 XRP. So I've turned my 100 XRP into 200 XRP by going between exchanges. But the act of doing that brings the prices back in line, right? By doing this arbitrage, you, you, you effectively equalize the prices between the two exchanges. And so the first few people that do this arbitrage may make some money, and then it, it kind of equalizes out over time. So you've got to be kind of quick on that. But that's what brings the prices in line. So this whole idea of some kind of private ledger that has some insanely high valued XRP on it just makes no sense because say there's some XRP on there that's that's worth whatever, $1,000, right? Mm. Who's going to buy that XRP for $1,000? Because I can go buy XRP for 50 cents or for whatever it is, 40 cents right now somewhere else. So if I can buy it for 40 cents, why the hell am I going to buy it for $1,000? So if I'm not going to buy it for $1,000, somebody's not going to sell it for $1,000, right? Because yeah, in sure. order to sell it for $1,000, you need to have somebody willing to buy it for $1,000. Well, it's typical and, supply and demand, right? I mean, you're, right, you, you know, it's right. what the going rate is. I mean, not necessarily what somebody wants for it. It's, you know, it's... Right. And so, but, and so typically that's, that's never going to happen because if I can buy it for 50 cents, I'm sure as hell not going to buy it for a thousand dollars. Right now. And, but even if I did, I, the, the fact that I start buying it for a thousand dollars, you know, and, and then I've, I've got this, well, I can buy all this other XRP for 50 cents and sell it on this private one for a thousand dollars means all the XRP I'm buying for 50 cents is going to drive the price up and all the XRP I'm selling for $1,000 on this private one is going to bring the price down. And that's what arbitrage does, and it brings the prices in together. Now, the mm -hmm. only reason why you, you have any significant like discrepancy between the prices is if there's some kind of blockage or, or, or reasoning why you can't move the asset backwards and forwards. Now, you may remember there used to be what was termed the kimchi premium, that the exchanges in Korea the prices were generally like 20, 30% higher for crypto in Korea. Now, the reason for that being is that you or I couldn't get an account in Korea because we're not Korean citizens, right? And then once we sold our XRP for, say, Korean won and, and made a profit, well, what could we do with that Korean won, right? We can't then do anything with it. We couldn't then move it. The cost to actually move it overseas would have canceled out that profit, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this, this whole notion of a, of a, of a private ledger 
is is just kind of nonsensical because even if this private ledger does exist and, and Ripple are working on this idea of side chains and you know they are working on this idea of private ledgers for right. you know, CBDCs and stuff. So so I'm not saying that they don't exist in that regards, but there's not just some secret one with some massively high XRP on it because who you know if there was somebody willing to buy at that price, somebody would have sold it and the price would come down and you know they would then go and um, you know make a profit elsewhere. So you know it, it's just kind of yeah it's it, it's just it's just nonsensical, right? There's so Colin Benson wants to know why does it seem that XRP is the only one the price glitch because this has happened so many times on exchanges where for just a short period of time and it seems to be the only one now maybe it's not but it'll yeah. go up to like over a thousand you know USD and some crazy amounts of uh, or at least in the, the hundreds is is there something you think there's a reason why that just glitches on XRP or is that the only one we notice? I think it's a combination of it's the only one we notice because people are kind of looking at it for this for this glitch so hard mm. right i think it's the only way we notice but also because the xrp ledger has a dex it's possible to again do weird things with 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 the dex right i can create my own token mat token and go and sell it for some huge amount of xrp you know i can make an arbitrary price for it and buy and sell it and you know do do things like that that can then uh, potentially kind of leak back in, into potentially being a, a price of XRP, right? Because if I if I say that Matt token is worth a thousand dollars and I sell, you know, uh, whatever a, a, a thousand XRP for one Matt token, then that means one XRP is technically worth a million dollars, right? Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's you know some people screwing around on the decks doing things and you know certain websites that. I mean, don't particularly check it, um, kind of report some strange things. So a classic example is the old xrpcharts.ripple.com site, which has been around for ages. It's not actively maintained now, um, but people have worked out that there's, uh, you know, there's, there's various metrics on there that they can, you know, put some weird orders on the, on the, on the decks and kind of cause to come up with strange numbers. Um, and I think that's, that's partly an element to it as well. I think nice. Good answer. King Solomon in the house says, uh, uh, Matt, are the, are the private ledgers actually federated side chains? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's like, like I said, Ripple, you know, make no secret about the fact that they have been working on, you know, the, the whole reason for creating the side chains system was to create effectively private ledgers. So I'm not saying they don't exist. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any in production at the moment. Ripple have been working on some. Um, with some of the CBDC customers, um, people like uh, Palau, um, Bhutan, for example, that they've you know they've been working with. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any in production. I mean, the the, the side chain code was still very much in development. I mean, at Apex, just when was that? Two months ago, um, mm -hmm. they kind of released, "Hey, here's the latest version of side chains," and it's quite a bit different than the previous version that they were working on. So, you know, none of that is really in production yet. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that there will be private ledgers that run on these federated sidechains. But again, the big thing with the federated sidechains is you can move XRP backwards and forwards between the sidechain and the main chain. And there's just no reason why the price would be, you know, some stupidly high value on a sidechain when the whole point of the sidechain is you can easily move XRP then. And, and now with the new sidechain code, other tokens can cross. Uh, the the you know the federator across onto the main chain as well, so there's there's nothing to kind of keep the price at any arbitrary you know level when you can move it backwards and forwards to the main the main chain, you can buy and sell it on the decks. So that's you know again that's where your arbitrage is going to come from. Right. Another benefit of that side chain is you can open and close it pretty you know transactionally, right? So you could run it open for. A little bit and then close it down so it's not really is there any uh is there is there any uh record of, of that i mean anywhere where is that stored um no that the, there isn't i mean you wouldn't even see it right the xr right. the main xrp ledger has no real concept that a side chain is even running yeah all it would see would be a a particular account seems to have a high level of traffic so you could probably sniff them out right um and and find them so you know short the fomo and and all the stuff that he's doing with uh, like tracking odl stuff and everything no doubt he'd be able to find all of the um 
you know, what are called Dora or what used to be called Dora accounts. So they've changed the name of them now. I can't remember what it's called now, but what are called Dora accounts, which were the kind of like the, um, uh, the account that would custody the XRP on its way over to the side chain, right? So you, you would have an account on the main chain that holds all of the XRP that is effectively represented on the side chain. And so you'd be able to probably sniff those out via various heuristics and metrics and stuff to, to, to find them. Um, but the XRP ledger itself has no kind of real notion of what a side chain is. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.